This video is a follow-up to our horsepower for free video where we gained eight horsepower using nothing other than blood, sweat and tears and some manifold carb spacers. What we're gonna do is run you through some carb modifications that I tried. Some worked, some didn't work. In this case, we used a test motor with 142 horsepower. Results might be a bit different depending whether you have more horsepower or less, but it gives you an idea. This was our test carburetor, standard 3236DJV. Our test motor wasn't this one, it was Dino Dog, which as most of you know by now, is completely standard bottom end, almost standard cylinder head, just very lightly modified with some uh, three angle seats and a tiniest, a tiniest bit of pull tin on the short sides. It housed an oval racing F2 cam. And to be honest, the engine spec wasn't really man enough to make use of the cam, but that was what was in it. And it produced 141 brake horsepower and 133 pound foot torque. Obviously, the mods we're gonna try now may not produce exactly the same results on different spec engines, but it will give a good idea. Q Dino Run. The first thing we tried was to remove the carburetor choke flaps, not just the flaps, but the spindle as well. And in my youth, I will swear this was worth a lot of horsepower. The car felt so much better. On a dyno, nothing, zip, zilch. Didn't do a damn thing. If anything, it actually lost us a bit of power low down. And I back to back tested it three times. Flaps in, flaps out, flaps in, no horsepower and a tiny loss low down. The next modification I tried was a stub stack. Carbon fibre printed, cheaply off eBay. I ran that with and without the choke flaps. Basically nothing. It might have picked up a fraction of power and where's removing the choke flaps removed a little bit of power low down. The stub stack seemed to put that back. But to be honest, the differences are so small, it was hard to replicate them from run to run. So next, I attacked the butterfly screws. This is a Chinese big ass rubbish but with the genuine rebel one next thing i did was i removed the butterfly screws countersunk the screw holes and screwed in some weber dcd spindle screws which are lovely and soft made of brass so the bit that sticks through is easy to fold down and because they're countersunk they don't stick out as much into the airflow so we did that on the primary and the secondary and we got a gain not a massive gain but we got another two and a half horsepower. Another modification we tried is again one for my youth, which we swore made a huge difference, and that was the auxiliary Venturis. They have two legs, a fat one and a thin one. The fuel goes around the fat one, the thin one is just there to support it. We got the file out and we thinned it down, made it knife edge, looks way more streamlined, doesn't do a thing, complete waste of time. Our last modification, I got a bit more serious. Bolted the carb down to the middle machine and bored the chokes. Boring chokes always helps. Most restricted part of the carb lets loads more air in. A millimetre would probably be enough, but I was in a go big or go home mood. Bored each choke out two millimetres from the standard 26, 27 up to 28, 29. Back on the dyno, we had a power gain, but it was very small, just a half a horsepower. So here we go, before and after. Not a big difference, but a difference nonetheless. It cost me nothing and we lost out nothing. We lost no power, we lost no torque. It was win-win all around. Whether the extra half horsepower really made it worth completely dismantling the carburetor to border chokes, I wouldn't like to say, but hey, if we'd have been applied to a 160 horsepower engine, would that have been another horsepower or two or three? Who knows? Maybe we'll have to try that as well. But as it is, good result and follows on from our manifold spacer test. And if you haven't seen that, it's there. It's a must watch, eight horsepower for free. I'll catch you on the flip side, guys.